Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Tom and Levi's Notepod, a non-stop bite-sized show about video game stuff and, well, stuff. Today's topic is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, released on March the 3rd on Nintendo Switch and the Wii U, and it's important we mention the Wii U, Tom, because you've played it on that and completed it. Yes, yes, I played it on the Wii U because I have a Wii U, and I'm not going to buy a new console to play a game that I've waited for years to play. And you've waited years to play it, what's it all about? Is it good? What are your first impressions at the time? Tell yes. us all. Well, I, I've played it for a month now. That's given me plenty of time to just get into it and just explore, and I am so into the game. I so, love it. Yeah, so you've gone through like the meat of it. So you've done the story, if you yes. can call it that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've done all the story quests. Um, so. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the, that's the great thing about it. There's you got the story, but you could play for about 200 hours, probably, and not even touch the story, if you don't want to. You just forget about it, do what you want. Yeah, it's quite a departure, I think. Yeah, it's a big departure from, like, previous Legend of Zelda games, but it pays off, from what I hear, critically acclaimed. A lot of, you know, very few people have had something bad to say about the game. Yes, definitely. I mean, I don't really have anything bad to say about the game. I have a few gripes, but like, yeah. I all in all, I I think it's it's great. I think it's yeah. by no means is it a perfect game. No, and I it's, think that's the problem with Zelda games. People expect sheer perfection. I think that's where people feel like they're disappointed, but they forget that at its core, it's still a brilliant game. That's true. You know, I mean, um, I think with a lot of games, the hype kind of overtakes them, and. Um, I think you can't really tell based on opinion in the first week or so of the game coming out because yeah. people are just so excited. Think back to Skyward Sword. Um, when that first came out, most people were going nuts over it. The reviews were really good, but then the kind of the hype dies down a little. People look at the game a bit more critically, and yeah. by, that game is flawed. In a yeah, lot of ways. It, it, it starts to dwindle, doesn't it? You kind of have stars in your eyes for the first few weeks when a game like The Legend of Zelda comes out, any kind yeah. of Zelda game, really. And it really, I think, time will tell when a game becomes a classic. And I think we've it's been only just over a month since Breath of the Wild come out. And, you know, I think slowly but surely people will come out and give a more wholehearted opinion as to whether it is a great game but so far definitely yes definitely i completely agree it seems to be pointing to a, a good direction i yeah i i stand by that um like obviously i was like i said i was going head over heels super crazy i pre-ordered it, it the first game i pre-ordered in a long long time actually yeah and <laughs> i just blew my budget <laughs> of video games for the year on that game yeah, I'm really glad I did, because I've just been playing it pretty much non-stop since. Well, yeah, the first thing I want to ask is, how different do you think the Wii version would be to the Switch? Because from what you told me, it doesn't seem to be like a, a big issue. I mean, pre-release, I think E3, they showed it on the Wii U, and they said it couldn't run at a steady 30 FPS, but I didn't hear anything after that. When it came no. out, there was no problem. No, I haven't really found any problem. If I'm honest, I've just been playing... Breath of the Wild. I've just been playing it on the, on the um, what they call it, on the gamepad screen, just in ah. handheld mode. I've not or really played like it on telly at all. Playing it as if it were on a Switch, <laughs> or like playing it as if it was on a DS or something. Yeah, yeah, Cause, exactly. I don't know. I think with my Wii U, I play most of my games just on the screen. Not, I don't really use the telly because I can't be bothered to change my wires no. around, like or whatever it's not permanently plugged in but i've not had any performance problems or anything like that so I've... yeah so technically you'd say that it holds up and that as a wii u standalone game is perfectly fine yeah yeah definitely Cause... i it's um i i did expect there to be some kind of difference between the switch and wii u but there's not <laughs> um it... we're going back to it's constantly compared to Twilight Princess, which yeah. came out GameCube and, I, and Wii. I found out late that um, Twilight Princess was actually a GameCube game, now an incredibly rare GameCube game. <laughs> I chose not to get it on GameCube. I decided to get it on Wii <laughs> when I bought it. Um, I so regret that decision. Hey, you might have a rarity on your hands now, though, with the Wii U version. 
<laughs> yeah, Who knows? yeah I, I must admit that did cross my mind. Yeah. <laughs> so you might even make uh, some profit. I, I, Who knows? I, I don't sell my games. No, I don't do that anymore. But I digress. So, like, there's different things. They always seem to spice it up with something new. Um, sometimes it's little things, sometimes it's bigger things. I'm thinking, like, Majora's Mask with the time aspect oh, and yeah, stuff that's like that. Oh, yeah, complete shift. Yeah, complete departure. And I think uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a big departure. Firstly, because it's, it's open world, but secondly, definitely. they've got so many different the the world is huge i think it's 12 times bigger than um in twilight princess something like that i heard which is incredible oh God, yeah it is it is really really big and i actually i thought twilight princess was pretty big like it took a while to get from one side of um like kakarika village to like yeah, uh, lake hillier or whatever I'm, I'm it kind took of, a long time and i yeah, i like that <clears throat> yeah i'm playing it right now twilight princess and i think fuck this is massive. I don't know if I could, but you yeah, see Breath you, of the Wild. That's the thing with Breath of the Wild. I don't think, I don't think at any point did I truly appreciate the scale of it, because I was always constantly in one area, just like going towards a place, and you can teleport between shrines or dungeons. We'll get onto that later, but like yeah. you can teleport around the map so easily, and I think in a way that kind of takes away the scale in yeah, a bit you I don't think... appreciate the distance between places although obviously it's really needed because the distance is huge if you want to yeah. get from one side to the other it takes a hell of a long time yeah it... i think yeah so I, I, I read somewhere like it took someone like an hour to get from one side of the map to that's the other crazy that's crazy in a video game but yeah. um i think when you have open world games, the biggest problem that people draw from is that there's not a lot of stuff to do. I think Aaron from Game Grumps mentioned, like, Grand Theft Auto had nothing to do, really. I think, does Zelda fill its world, the big world that it's created? Because you can get, with video <laughs> games, you can almost overcompensate. You make this massive world, but there's nothing to do in it. Do you think that Breath of the Wild uh, successfully manages to fill it and give it a, make it a breathing, living world? Oh, uh, 100%. I am... Um... Like I say, I completed it like within the first week or two, the story mode. And at that point, I was like, well, I've done it now. Now what? And I've just spent, since then, I've just spent it just going around all the places I didn't go. And I, not the other day, I didn't, I found somewhere that I hadn't been before. And I, there was these crazy horses and like some magic horse. And it was, it was, it was really nice to like just continue experiencing new stuff in a game yeah so you, even after you've done it it manages to hold your interest definitely enough yeah. to just go back to it again and again it it makes you want to explore that thing it's the constant phrase they've been using where like oh if you can see something you can get to it and you can and that is a good thing and it's really great because it pushes you to want to actually explore the game yeah, and it, and it's only going to make the longevity of the game huge because the problem with open world games that you get is all you have left after completing a story is, say, time trials, um, collectibles, and that can just make it a very shallow experience after yeah, that. Yeah, and you're definitely. just doing it for the sake of, say, an achievement or something, but in the end it's you know not as interesting. Yeah, that's, that's one of um, Breath of the Wild's biggest uh, pluses, biggest positive points I can think of is it actually is fun to explore it with skyrim a lot of people love skyrim i wasn't crazy on it if i'm honest yeah and because i just didn't enjoy walking around the world i didn't enjoy exploring it yeah that may I be think, a controversial opinion well but... i think it's a subjective opinion because it's how people get immersed in video games i mean some <laughs> people don't some people completely do away with um open world games and prefer a linear approach in many aspects i do myself that's not to say that I don't enjoy open world games, um, but you know I think it is a subjective thing, yep. uh, the type of game. And when you have a world, sometimes you're not going to want to do everything in it. Sometimes you want to be resigned to a closed-in area where you can drive forward, say, a narrative or just a good gameplay mechanic or something. Yeah, there's got to be something. You know, people have their their own gripes about yeah, certain definitely. video games. That's what I found out from playing Breath of the Wild. I found out that. I actually prefer Zelda, linear Zelda. Yeah, not I, you know. I, I I love the Breath of the Wild's open wild, open wild, open world, <laughs> um, 
nature to it, but I like the story, the constant, like, feel like you're actually reading through a book, reading like yeah. you're on an adventure, you're not just yeah. like, make your own, you know? I think, yeah, the fact, I think, I think for Zelda, they did something different. I think if you have the same game over and over again, I think it's cool that they made it open world. That being said, there are Zelda games that are completely different, that may be more engaging to people and it's what I said about people preferring something more linear then they might go they might say I didn't like Breath of the Wild because it's too open and I'm not all about that I preferred Wind Waker because you're kind of on your own structured path yeah like I feel like that's the thing in those ones where it's oh you oh it's a linear game I don't think any Zelda game is that linear of any no. of all the game um like platforms all the um all the games to choose I don't think Zelda was so linear that it needed to have an open world game. Because in yeah. every Zelda game, in Wind Waker, for example, I, I, you could say that's a linear game, but I spent yeah. so much time just True. sailing around, going where I want. There is an air of exploration in those kind of games, but you still feel like you, you, there's a focus, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think... So you're, what, yeah, you're, being direct, you're being directed somewhere to go, and what makes Breath of the Wild different, not necessarily, it's not, a, it's not a negative by any means, but the way it differed from previous games was it's not pointing you in directions. For the most part, you can kind of do whatever the hell you like. Yes, like, um, um, that, that's the thing, that's the main thing, it's um, nothing is blocked off. You don't have to get some boots before you can go somewhere, you don't have to have a hook shot before you can get over somewhere. Yeah, from from the get go, you're, you it just oh, yeah. opens you up to the world. You wake up and here you are. You yeah, can, if you want, you like. there's some idiots who just can't wait to die, and they'll just go <laughs> straight to the main boss and get their what ass handed to. What a calamity! <laughs> What's a calamity, Ganon? <laughs> and like, literally, just and you will get beaten to a pulp. But yeah, I'm sure but there's it's, someone it's, who has managed to beat him. They've like, said they've said you can do what you want. If you want to fight Sammy Gun, go ahead, go ahead. I wouldn't do it myself. Go ahead. Yeah, which yeah. is cool. I like that about that. And just, just it's just in the way it differs. So Wind Waker, you play the game and it gradually opens up. You start off in your in your home village, and then it and then it opens up, and then you can start to explore. But generally, you're following a path. Yes. And some people prefer that, and that's not a problem. I think, uh, you know, there's plenty of Zelda games to play if Breath of the Wild isn't for you. Definitely, definitely. But I kind of, I kind of want to dart back into the gameplay of Breath of the Wild, because I haven't played it, personally, so I don't know how different things... I can only hear things that have affected me. <laughs> okay. I hear a lot about um, uh, the weather system, for instance. You get desert areas, yes, you get yes. snowy areas, but they affect the player. They affect Link in the game which I think is cool but I don't yes, really know definitely. Enough, but... yeah no uh, weather conditions and stuff like that that's like one of my favorite parts about this game like you can you can go you can just turn off the UI which gives you all this useless information which is actually very useful and just experience the game as if you're link and oh look link shivering well I better put some warmer so clothes on so he can't just he's not just invincible and can brave a snowy mountain no, no. peak no, exactly, and like the desert. Oh, you're getting very hot. You, you better put on some lighter clothes or something, or find or eat some food to cool yourself down. Or... So it doesn't. It doesn't feel like forcing. It's not. It, it adds only an air of challenge to it, does it? Or is it kind of? Is, no, is if it, it, does, it feels is it... very natural. It feels like quite obvious in a way. Like yeah, or like of course I can't just walk into a desert. Like wearing <laughs> wearing a Parker coat. Yeah, <laughs> like just, no, of course not. You don't like wear my snow snowy boots. peak. A snowy peak in your boxes. <laughs> you can try, but you will freeze very quickly <laughs> and shrink. <laughs> and so, uh, like your health goes down. Is like the kind of yeah, like it just kind of knocks and knocks down. So and links like visibly like puffing. You know, cold. yeah, you can see his breath like um, condensating, which is cool. And I, it, think like, I think it makes complete sense. Why would they not have that? Yeah, in the sometimes game? they just use video game logic. Then they're like, "Well, they don't because he's Link. Is that enough?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that's cool. So it adds an extra kind of depth to the world. It makes it feel more alive. So with that, because we talk about equipping yourself with different like conditions and climates, what is the clothing like? Because I haven't seen Link in classic green. So where no, where where no. does that come in? 
Well, that's links... like a staple link <laughs> aspect. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes, it is. Um, well, like, obviously, the the clothing has changed. You may have seen it. It's the, um, his... Obviously, because you can have all these other yeah. different Everywhere outfits I look, and everything. The box have... art, etc. is in, like, a, a blue. And yeah, a like, nice Ooh. pale blue. And it looks nice. You At first, you're like, what the hell? That ain't Link. But <laughs> it doesn't when you're bother playing me the that game... much. But, you know, you expect there to be an air of green. But you can just kind of do what you want. I've seen a lot of people wearing all sorts of things. For yes, stuff yeah, I've there's so the many internet. outfits. There's a lot of outfits. I think they're really great. And you can dye them. Straight away, I got, like, one of the basic outfits and dyed it green. Oh, no way. <laughs> Just because. And they look cool. You feel really cool. But speaking about his classic outfits, the amiibo functionality in this game, I think, is really well implemented. Oh, so it doesn't feel like, you know, it's forced or anything, like, by no, the amiibo? No, you don't even have, like... You have to turn on the amiibo functionality, which I didn't realise at first, and I was just like, so when do I get to use amiibo? Oh, I could already use them. Okay. I had to turn it on. But, um, excuse me, you can, like, all the amiibos, because there's there's so many now, it's ridiculous. No one has them all. If you have (laughs) them all, you don't have any money left. So you can buy this game. Um, You can use them all on the... um, on, on, like, on, on the game, and you you get items just drop from the sky. Useful items, like getting oh, so some extra just, like, meat or some you, arrows. You pop, pop an amiibo on there, and something pops up, yes, like in yeah. a chest or something. Yes, no, uh, well, if they're not Zelda, um, Zelda amiibo, uh, they'll just fall from the sky. It'll just be just useful general items, like arrows, for example. So it's but not if, like a... It's not like a pay-to-win thing kind of deal. So, like, you no, get, like, a really not. overpowered something. Uh, well, if you have... <laughs> if you... <coughs> excuse me. If you have Zelda Amiibos and you pop them on your thing, you will get a treasure chest dropped from the sky, and that will have one of a um, a random item specific to that Amiibo. Uh, For example, I've got the Wind Waker Link Amiibo. And there's a chance that you can get his outfit, ah, the Wind Waker Link's outfit for your character in Breath of the Wild, which How is really that... nice. And each because there's so many different Link amiibos now, you can get Ocarina of Time Link's um, outfit. How, how do the outfits differ? Do you literally turn into a cartoon Link? That'd be funny. <laughs> oh no, Link. no, that would be that would be <laughs> funny. No, they're kind of they're still in a Breath of the Wild style. Ah. Uh, I was just but... imagining Toon Link puffing his cheeks out in the cold <laughs> weather. I would have enjoyed that. that would cool. <laughs> Toon Link's Get my on favorite it, guys. Link. Nintendo, yeah. where you at? Yeah, that brings me on to actually. That's a good segue to um, Link, the character of Link. Yeah, I feel uh, like they have... he's actually fleshed out a little more. He still so... doesn't talk, but in some of the backstory, that's kind of explained. That is a little bit. It's it's not a spoiler. I'm not. It's not. I'm not going to class this as a spoiler, but okay. it's kind of explained that spoiler. He, d- he doesn't. Sh- <laughs> he doesn't really talk because, like, he's got a job to do because he's a, the appointed knight or whatever. Oh, so he's the uh, strong, silent type. Yeah, he feels like he can't express his emotion. He, ne- he doesn't so say emo. That. <laughs> <laughs> like he feels like he he's the strong soldier. I'll let my sword do the talking. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, I, I think that's cool, though. Cause you I need think, to, yeah, it's nice that they address that. Well, not only that, because there's voices now in this game, isn't there? Before, when it was conveyed through all subtitles with every character, they've yeah. added voice. Yeah, that some of the voice... Does that make much difference to you? Uh, it definitely adds something. Like, Zelda is actually a character this time around. She's not just some some girl who you don't see. A very two-dimensional. Yeah, she's actually... You feel like she's a nerd, and she's way over her head. Like, And it's it's nice that they've actually fleshed her out a little. Yeah, I think the best Zelda, <laughs> in my opinion, I haven't played Breath of the Wild, so this is, my, is uh, Wind Waker with uh, Tetra. Oh, okay, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I agree. Played, I feel with, with, yeah, yeah. Although I did quite oh, so like Zelda and Skyward Sword. Yeah, Ocarina of Time as well. Remember who Zelda was there? Yeah, yeah. But like, know. even in those games, she's just been a bit of an 
just As, like yeah, you kind of you don't really care you don't yeah, the care problem is it's when she becomes a princess in uh, wind waker and i think ocarina of time she suddenly becomes the typical archetype of the damsel in distress <laughs> yeah yeah that's right yeah as soon as in wind waker as soon as she becomes princess elder it's just she, oh that's it that goes that very, really cool character yeah a very two-dimensional character as opposed to a badass pirate who's you know telling you off <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly no, but it's, yeah, so I digress. Like, all the Zelda amiibos, they have these special items. You can get um, the Gandalf one, actually, has a really cool. You can get his. Um, the Sword of the Sages, which gets. which you get stabbed by. Ah, in so. Twilight Princess. So you think it's more of just like a bonus if you own the amiibos as opposed to a necessity? You don't. Definitely, definitely. There's no. you don't need them, but they're nice to have. Especially if you're low on items or you need some food, just tap your amiibo, whatever, get some fish fall from the sky. It's great. That that is pretty cool. So I kind of want to talk more about the challenge of Zelda because generally, at least my experience with Zelda games, they haven't been too difficult. It's kind of the charm about Zelda is it's a lot of people could play them, but this one's actually got more of a challenge. I think, uh, yes, you know, yeah. different enemy types, you can really get your ass handed to you on this game. Yeah, definitely. But I, th- I think that depends how you want to play it. You can play it where you literally just go in, in your box of shorts, with a little stick and try and beat up a centaur. And in the you freezing will... cold. <laughs> yeah, in the freezing, and you will die very quickly. Or you can be really methodical and really plan things out and just snipe people off from a distance. Yeah, I think it... So you'd say it requires you to be a bit more pensive <laughs> with your approach as uh, when yeah, in previous... tactical. And... Yeah, previous Zelda's you could kind of just go in... Oh, yeah, blazing. yeah. Twilight Princess, for example, on the Wii. Just go in, waggle the remote, yeah, everyone dead. Yeah. But no, you actually... I, I like it that there's a challenge because even just... Especially at the beginning of the game, you have, like, these... The standard enemy book goblins, and like if you get outnumbered by them, they can be very challenging. They can actually you have to actually block their attacks. You they will surround you. They will try and flank you, and they won't just. Um, in most of the other Zelda games, like Ocarina of Time, enemies will only attack you one at a time. Yeah, like, they won't just swarm you and just annihilate you. In this, they will swarm you and annihilate you. <laughs> Both swarm <laughs> and annihilate. <laughs> yes, in very swift fashion. Yeah. so they f- You uh, feel like they're smart and they're living. Yeah. It's what you need. Perfect. So the enemy AI is challenging, but with a more calculated approach. Still, you know, an acceptable amount of challenge. Yes, yeah. You And you've really got to... Um, every time you find, like, an enemy camp or whatever, you can just watch them and... You feel like they're a bit more alive, like even the enemies have a bit more character because you can just see them. They'll just start dancing around the campfire for no reason or like talk <laughs> amongst themselves. Yeah, and I like just seeing character. Up. Yeah, even yeah. in just something as plain and boring as a, like because, a moblin. Because it's something you notice. It's the kind of attention to detail that you appreciate when you see <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. Like, oh, look, you know, because they are, they're not just characters waiting to be attacked by a. Uh, a figure in a tunic they are actually doing stuff they're living people yeah and they will only bother you if you actually either you know initiate combat or come too close um one thing that i really like the moblins which are the big guys they usually have a giant club and they're very quite tough early on in the game they will (laughs) if they drop their weapon they will sometimes pick up one of the smaller goblins and throw them at you, like a <laughs> weapon, which is really like funny. Like a last wall of defense kind <laughs> of thing. It's hilarious, first time you see it, it's so funny. So, like, uh, uh, what, what kind of, like, characters, kind of enemies are we dealing with here? We get in, like, return of characters, like, fleshed out, kind of a Breath of the Wild vibe to new or old characters? Or yes, is it, like, a nice mix? Kind of, yeah. You kind of get some new ones. you got... The standard like octorocks, which were the little octopuses that shoot stuff at you, and they are actually pretty accurate in this game. Before Ocarina of Time, they would fire a little nut at you, or whatever, a rock, and be really a uh, octo rock. Wait a minute, um, they'll be really slow, and you could easily just walk out of the way. 
These mm. <laughs> will actually kind of target you, and they will get you from a long way away. And they're quite tough. I, yeah. Like, at first, because you just one shot you. So I'd um, love to see like a like a re dead. I wish they had those brought those. Yeah, back. I re- seen the oh, of... they used to terrify me when I was a kid. I think it was on Majora's Mask scared the living crap out of me. Oh, that game is just a nightmare for you all. Whatever. It's scary. It's very dark, but yeah. Uh... Yeah, sorry. Um, it's got like the standard moblins and bokoblins, which are like the basic enemies, really. But new to the game. Yeah, I'd like to hear the what's new. The new enemies, which are really cool. Also, just, sorry, adding to the bokoblins, there's horse-mounted bokoblins, which are pretty fun. A bit oh, more horse-mounted were... combat, yeah. which is cool. Um, <coughs> adding to that, there's these guardians, which are giant robots, pretty much. You know The Incredibles? Yes, I do. The film. Think. You know the um, little spider-walking uh, thing? It's like a dome... Oh ball yes, yes, yeah, legs. yeah. It's pretty much that, and it's so it's really actually they're really terrifying because the music chimes in really like harsh piano music. Oh god! And they they will oh they're just brutal. They have a laser that locks on, and just constant stream of fire, and they you, you... they're so mean <laughs> and horrible and terrifying, That's especially awesome. if there's more than one. Um, so cool. There's also there's smaller versions of them. There's um, <coughs> giant big, uh, uh, what are they called? Giant bokoblins. They're like huge trolls. Oh, what? Are they, are they like bosses kind of deal? Or just yeah, like big kind characters? of. You just find them around the map. They're huge. And they have like items strung around their neck. You can just be really sneaky and take them whilst they're sleeping. Or you can just try and kill them. Yeah. Um, there's also... Oh, one of the toughest enemies in the game, which I, killed me more than the final boss did. In fact, I didn't die at all facing the final boss. Oh, I didn't die at all. <laughs> no, it was it was kind of easy because I'd built myself up to it. I'd actually worked yeah. towards. Well, you can choose, can't you, when to defeat? And I think you know if you if you're careful, you'll probably sort it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, they're called Lynels, and they are centaur Hello. people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lionel Richies. A couple of Lionel Richies roll up to the joint. You know trouble's going to start. <laughs> yes. Sorry, go on. <laughs> anyway, he turns up, Lionel, and they're... Oh, my... They're Hello. so... <laughs> Shut up. Sorry. <laughs> they're, they are so tough. They they what really they are like? tactical. I've they're like centaurs, of... so they're like big horsemen thing, but they're kind of like a lion, hence Lionel. Ah. Uh, and... The, the, they're really, really big. There's me thinking they actually look like Lionel Richie. It's lost points for me now. <laughs> that would be better, actually. Yeah. You, but, um... yeah, they've got like giant axes and fire arrows and like breathe fire, and they will just charge you and beat up your horse <laughs> and not kill take your horse. Any of your shit? No, they do not. With... They really don't. They're the, in my experience, there's there's different levels of them, and there's this one near like end game and it's just so difficult i actually ended up skipping it and just like avoiding it going around it because it was just so hard it just kept one shotting me pretty much oh damn well that just kind of shows the diversity of the characters it's not just an easy (laughs) hack and slash oh kill some macoblins and the occasional boss this is a proper fully fleshed out you can be quite quite creative um in the ways that you defeat these enemies though you can like put a bomb on like a raft and then attach a balloon to the raft and then blow it over to some enemies and then detonate it. Yeah, I've seen I've seen some creativeness <laughs> with it. I mean the magnetic ability that you get, the yes. stopping of time and, and like, you know, boulders going off cliffs. It's really awesome to see the the way and it's giving you that freedom to just approach it however you like with yeah. using those kind of abilities. It doesn't just force these it kind of does force the tools on you, yes, but it doesn't force you to use them. Yeah. Like, often I'll just be trying to do a thing, and then I'll be like, oh, oh god, yeah, I forgot I've got this ability, I can just use that. And it's nice that it's not kind of shoehorned in your face, you have to use a thing here now. Yeah, you, it kind of You have to use this to... ability, you have to use this item to get past. Yeah, it kind of draws back 
kind of draws back to the whole we're not going to hold your hand here you, you you will learn it as you go along it's the classic way that games were made you were never told it's like you weren't told how to play the game you were literally thrown into the world and you adapt or you die in these kind of games <laughs> that's the that, kind that, of that's deal a good way of putting it, yeah and it's whether you decide whether it's fight or flight or if it's a good challenge or just impossible or easy. You kind of work it out and then you kind of grow with the world around you, which is an awesome aspect of this game. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. To, uh, to digress slightly, but uh, you kind of talked earlier about the way the music sort of crescendoed. And it's not, um, you know, this is typical of Zelda games, always a great soundtrack. So we won't touch upon it too much, but I'm uh, sure we've got the same. Yeah, well, no, come to think of it, I can't. Like the music, the sound yeah. sound effects and stuff are brilliant. But you've mentioned there's more of an ambiance. <laughs> yeah, music, music just walking around. You don't get this usual Hyrule field, did do, did do, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of a bit gentle, and it's kind of how it's meant to be. You don't really notice it, mm. which is nice. You don't want something that's just com- completely draw you out of the experience. Like I couldn't hum a single tune from Breath of the Wild, if I'm honest, off, off the top of my head. But you know, would you say that it was enough to? It was a soft sort of in the background. Yeah, not, I, I'm not like, saying that's a bad thing at all. No, not at all. I mean, we talked about Ocarina of Time. There was like, <laughs> um, there was like an uh, like hymns. There was like an orchestra, but there was also like really weird chanting and stuff like that in certain temples and stuff but it, it you remember it you can't you can't recite it but it's in your brain yeah yeah that's right it do so it's you know i i never fought with the sound in zelda they always seem to get that pretty right whether it's subtle or yeah, it's always very have. adventurous and epic and it feels like you're on you know, an adventure a journey yeah, I, I think a we'll uh We've got we've got one more thing to talk about, Tom, which is quite an important aspect of Zelda, personally, at least if we're talking about, you know, just, you know, staple aspects that never seem to go away. And that's that's the way they've dealt with temples. And how have they done that? Because I think yes, I, hear, yeah. I hear shrine a lot more than I hear temple about <laughs> yeah, this game. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> well, like you, like you said, the dungeons in Zelda games, they're like, they are the kind of, they're a staple product of every Zelda game. Mm. You will always... Do a thing, meet a race of people, beat the forest ta- temple, kill the boss. Yeah, and a kind of a cycle repeats. This Ooh. is, <coughs> excuse me, this is very different in the way. Of course, you can't. They can't do that because you're free to do whatever you want. You're free to explore. Yeah, you're no longer resigned to approach. Here is a temple. Yeah, here is a temple. Get an item in the temple. Beat the boss. It's <coughs> what there is. There's shrines. These are just little. Quite funny shaped obelisks that um, are like dotted around the map, and you go inside them. And once you're inside them, they act as a warp point, so you can teleport around the map. And there's hundreds. There's, there is literally hundreds dotted all over the place. Which again kind of blows Twilight <coughs> Princess out of the water in terms of the stuff you can explore. When you're like, "Wow, there's like what twelve temples I've come across." And yeah, then... yeah, yeah. It yeah, I, I said constantly. earlier, Twilight Princess is my, my favourite <laughs> Zelda game for dungeons. But this, Breath of the Wild, does it so differently. Because all of these shrines, they have, they're they like a... The way, only way I can think of describing it is like a puzzle room from Portal 2. Or Portal. Ah. Like, <laughs> every single like um, shrine is like another chamber where there's... You're just thrown in. There's like a physics puzzle, for example. There's companion cubes. Wait, sorry. I'm <laughs> yeah, and like that kind of stuff. Well, companion cube is probably a good way of describing the spherical companion things. They're, they're like, um, they're just balls. And in a lot of shrines and stuff, these balls, you've got to get them into a hole. So there's, a, there's of course, a, another staple is the puzzling aspect. Yeah. Sort of different things to solve in the I, I really, really like the puzzle shrines. I think they're really, really well done. And um, how many how many have you come across? <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know how many I've done. Probably only touched on about a quarter in the whole game, I guarantee I guarantee um, um, it. Because like, you... <laughs> it continues to surprise me how many there are. Would you say that there's like an air of consistency to the puzzle? Did you not feel like after you come you're like that was easy? Oh. 
Well, like, I see what you mean, like, um, have they been repeated, repeated yeah, it's kind tough. of solution. If you have that many shrines and stuff, you've got to switch it up somehow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Some some will be like a, um, a motion-controlled puzzle where you've just got to tilt the gamepad around to get a ball in a hole. But they're really, really well presented. Um, some will be like, you've got to put an ice block somewhere to stop some flow so you can actually get up somewhere. Or you've got to move something with magnesis. Um, I think they're all, in my experience, they've all been very unique. Apart from some, <coughs> which in no means is a criticism, there are some that are they're called tests of strength. There's like a right. minor, then there's a modest, and there's a major test of strength. And it's literally just one on one you versus these miniature scouts. And they're they're pretty tough, but once you get the hang of them they're they're kind ah, so of they're kind of, kind of combat challenges, but the stronger <laughs> your link gets, you'll probably be able to dispatch them quicker, is that kind of deal? Yes, yeah, definitely. Because you you find so much so many weapons. Because there's the durability of weapons. Yeah, which has been discussed. I'll only touch on that, but like, yeah. like that is, I think that's really neat because you can always find something to use to kill someone with. <laughs> like a, a, I saw someone using a, like a pot lid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, you can. You can it's use a funny. pitchfork you just find at some farm. <laughs> a leg of lamb. <laughs> you can use a soup ladle. That's pretty <laughs> fun. I just imagine a <laughs> granny coming out. Come eat your dinner. <laughs> you got a pot lid and a soup ladle and you're just beating the shit it's out a, of something. It's a nice ensemble, it'd fit. <laughs> and you're doing it in your underpants because you've got no armour. No, um, yeah, going on to dungeons though, there's these shrines. That is one part of the game, one part of dungeons. Then there are these... It's not a spoiler, I'm not going to say. It's not a spoiler. There are four big beasts. They're called divine beasts because they're huge, giant robots... <laughs> and you go inside them and cleanse them. Oh. And so there's like a kind of darkness in them that you need to relinquish or something. <laughs> yes. And they are the only, other than the final boss, they are the only places where you'll have an actual boss. And a boss battle. And, and would you say that they like follow the criteria of like the typical Zelda boss? Do you find their flaw and then exploit it? That kind of deal? Um, In a way... Like in a way, the like the um, combat techniques that you use have kind of been followed up upon throughout your journey to that divine beast. These giant yeah. robot camels, whatever. Camel. <laughs> I'm not going to say the others, but they are really, really cool to look at. And they're inside of them. It you can control part of the beast. Oh no way! You, and like that really just adds a whole new depth to like the amount of puzzles that there are one that one you rotate like 90 degrees whilst you're inside it no so the whole room is just flipped and that's really <laughs> it's, like, oh, it, it's really really neat really creative that they kind of do that yeah but you don't have to do them you yeah. don't have to do them at all long and short of it is you do them them four big dungeons the final boss will be a little bit easier yeah. You will get some kind of reward from it. But you don't have to if you don't want to. If you can't be bothered, it's fine. I should add that the reason for doing the shrines... <coughs> the reason for doing the shrines is you get what are called spirit orbs, which you can then trade in at numerous statues around the map for heart containers or stamina vessels. Ah, I see. Oh, okay, you got to so level up that's, somehow. Yeah, that's how you get yourself stronger. That's cool. Know. More yeah. hearts, more hits you can take. We've kind of uh, gone on plenty of tangents on this. I think we've widely dissected what makes Breath yeah, of the Wild. Yeah, that's, that's a... pretty much my my take on one of... I, I think it's pretty undisputed. One of the best games of the last couple of years, really. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I feel like, obviously, people are going to need a bit more time. You never know how the, there's a lot of aspects to a massive game like this. You know, people are still uncovering things today and it's been out for over a month now. Um, Definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's but, my experience with it. But overall, as someone who, you know, like myself, has favoured previous 
Zelda title was and was, you know, on the fence about a slight departure from the genre and doing something different, I would say that overall, at least from your perspective, it was an overwhelming success. Definitely. I would say that if anyone is looking to get into a Zelda game, I wouldn't class this as a Zelda game, really. So, yeah. That's my main and I mean, criticism. I wouldn't see it as a Zelda game. I see no. it as a game, a really great game, that happens to be a Zelda game. Yeah, it has 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 the simple <laughs> Zelda aspects to it. Yeah, if it didn't have actual Zelda or Link, and just had some other characters like um, Gerald and Gretchen, <laughs> the Legend of Gerald, <laughs> the Legend of Gerald and Gretchen, then <laughs> it'll be it'll still be a great game. But you because wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. Be that having it wasn't that Zelda. argument, won't they? No, Gretchen's not the main character. It's <laughs> Gerald. How did you get it wrong, fake fan? My favorite character's Gretchen. But yeah, you've, he's you've... my favorite Link. <laughs> we digress slightly, but yes, uh, I give over... the game a solid. I I uh, I give it a, doing a solid a new, nine new... out of ten. A nine out of a ten from Thomas. Yes. That's a... I'd say that's a giant thumbs up. That's, that, uh, that is a huge thumbs up. Yeah. If I had three thumbs, I'd put at least nine out of ten of them up. And Tom is very critical. He gave his lunch today a seven out of ten. And I, it looked like an eight to me. So yeah, it's, it's, he doesn't like lettuce, like but I think I it love lettuce. completes what are you about? a sandwich, if you ask me. No, you got to have lettuce green. with... Um, you gotta have some dressing. Oh, that's the problem. <laughs> we digress slightly. But <laughs> Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild on yes. the on the Nintendo Wii U, also on the Switch. I I don't know how much you'll be disparaged, but uh, on the Wii U, it gets a gleaning nine out of ten. Yeah, fantastic game. Very um, worth playing. If you have a Wii U, definitely get it. It's the best Wii U game. Breath of the Wild, very worth playing. Tom Hull, 2017. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Levi, okay, for well, listening but... to me. Yeah, I'm quite happy to listen to you more, Tom. But I think that's it now for our bonus jumbo-sized very first episode of the Notepod. Um, we got more topics, got more stuff to say with this show, so yes. we'll be back. It's just kind of serious, not not as light-hearted. As we love game games. Pod, but... That's the problem. We love games, so we have a lot to talk about. So sometimes we can't be so hilarious. Sometimes we just really want to talk about why we love games. Yeah, this is real game journalism we're doing. This, right this now. is real. I'm going to put <laughs> this on my CV. <laughs> no, I'm not. But that no, me neither. But thanks, thanks for being with me, Tom. And I'll That's see right, you Levi. next episode. Take care, man. Yes. See you on the Notepod next. Bye. Bye.